Excellent. Well, hey everyone. This is going to be a little bit different. This is a Saturday afternoon. It's a very nice warm day. I expect it to be the last 80 degree day this year, likely, here in the Northwest. And it is early fresh hop season. Sorry, that's my super excited grin in case you hadn't figured that out yet. Today I actually have three beers. It's not a head-to-head -head per se. Not all of them are fresh hops, but two of them are. Um, I was having a little get-together with some friends, a soiree, if you will. And uh, since I'm the beer nerd of the friend group and the host, uh, I went out this morning and found some beers. Because, uh, well, that's what I do. Anyways, um, so this is going to be a quick little review of the two fresh hops I found in the area. That is Little Beast's Brewing, Little Beast Brewing's Green Keeper um, Pale Ale, Level Beer's Fresh Hop Lager 23, and then Ho River Brewing's Thor's Vog Nordic Kvike. Those of y'all who've watched the channel before know that I like Kvikes. We're going to start off with Level Beers Fresh Hop Lager. I'm doing this in a particular order, going from the weaker or less strongly flavored beer upwards, um, so that each subsequent beer doesn't blow my palate out for the one following. Sorry, each, uh, each beer doesn't blow my palate out for the one following. So to begin with, this is Level Beers Fresh Hop Lager 23. Uh, this is an Oregon brewery. I've not had their beers before. I picked this up on the taps at um, Oli Tap Room this morning. Many thanks to them. I mean, I still paid them for it. Full price. But many thanks to them for having a Fresh Hop IPA. So, uh, sorry, not an IPA. A Fresh Hop Lager. So, uh, Fresh Hop. Um, these are hops that were harvested this year. And they were not kilned. They were sent directly to brewers for immediate inclusion in a beer. Um, these beers, both the Little Beast and the Level Beer, come from Oregon, where they are growing hops in the Willamette Valley, which is a little, little bit warmer than Washington and has a little bit longer growing season, so their hops are ripe already. Washington's hops are ripening right now, and so we're going to expect beers based on them to drop over the next two, three weeks, four weeks. Um, in fact, I'm looking forward to possibly uh, going out on September 30th to a all fresh hop tap room. We'll see. We'll see. Um, anyways, so an Oregon Fresh Hop by Level Beer. This is the Fresh Hop Lager 23. Lagers in general are smooth, easy drinkers. They just are. If you want something that's not going to be shouty, that is going to blend well with a wide variety of situations, a lager is likely to be an easy go-to. You don't have to think too hard about how it fits into your meal. Ales can be a little bit more persnickety due to their stronger, more precise flavors. I would generally describe a lager's character as being muddy or muted. Not confused, just things are kind of mixed together more in a lager, right? So this is using fresh Willamette hops. I don't know which hops. I do know that a friend of mine who was over this afternoon, who is allergic to some hops, was not allergic to these. So I was happy for you, Rob. This taste of kind of a lemon lime, which is really nice, kind of a, a generic refreshing citrus. And it's really just a pleasant, light, late summer beer. You know, it's it's not asking too much. It's got a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of earthiness, a lot of greenness. That's really what the fresh hops are bringing. The fresh hops are bringing just vibrant green, vibrant plant. The fresh hops are those hops that have just been harvested because hops are essentially flowers. Think of how quickly a flower that is cut wilts if it's not given water right away, right? So a fresh hop is a very volatile container of 
wonderful compounds. It has to be used right away or, 99% of hops are, kilned. That is, baked in a way to preserve as many of those flavors as possible, but even the best kilning still loses some flavor. So, and, and primarily those vibrant, fresh, green flavors. Uh, think of a fresh flower versus a dried flower, right? So that's what you're getting, dried kilned hops versus fresh hops. And this, it's a perfectly decent, blonde, light lager with a very nice, verdant character to it. I like it. It's good stuff. It's that good. Now, rinse the cup. And my mouth. Because, what am I, some two-bit mix your beer, you know, reviewer? Maybe? No. Next up, I have Little Beast Brewing's Green Keeper Pale Ale. Last year, my absolute favorite fresh hop was a pale ale. Pale ales are more moderately hopped than India Pale Ales. They're the same family of beer. The India Pale Ale just takes the hopping up to 11. All right, pale ales more moderately hopped. Considering fresh hops tend to be more delicate in flavor, it's not surprising that pale ales are a common place to find them. I don't know what any of that has to do with, say, the volume of hops that are involved in a, pale, in a fresh hop pale ale versus a kilned hopped India pale ale. I don't know that. I just know that generally, along with being more verdant and fresh, fresh hops are also more delicate and subtle and subtle in their flavoring. Less punchy, maybe, in some regards. So a pale ale, moderately hopped beer, is a great place to find, or to place, and then find, fresh hops. This one smells of pineapple. In fact, it's a pretty clean pineapple. It's not mixed with other tropical fruits the way a lot of other um, hazies would be. Like it's a pretty clean pineapple plus some, uh, some funky earthiness. Um, some of those earthy hops that I've detected in other beers that I'm not able to, uh, to really, I don't know the name of. Um, so I'm guessing that these are probably, there, there's probably multiple variety of hops in here, or the hops are those that I have smelt in other beers. I should really study hops more. Yep. So this one. The taste stays true to the nose. This is uh, this is Little Beast Brewing's Green Keeper Pale Ale, and there's a pineapple, a really nice pineapple. But then, and this is something unique to this beer, it has a very West Coast IPA finish. That is, it has a really nice kind of bushy, verdant, uh, juniper pine tree kind of finish to it. It's not. It's not punchy in the mouth strong, it's there though. And the thing I like about that finish is that it really encourages you to drink again. Take another swig, I mean, cause that's the point, right? So you have this really nice, clean, and really rather focused pineapple nose and pineapple taste. And then this really nice verdant, bushy, green, bitter, finish. It's really nice. It has a really nice finish. I really enjoy this beer. This is this is a really good pale ale. Um, and I don't know, like I haven't had any other of Little Beast Brewing's beers. I don't know if Little, if a Green Keeper is, has a non-fresh hop version. Um, I would wonder if the pineapple might be um, both more intense and possibly more uh, mixed with other flavors in the kiln version? I don't know. It's just really nice. Like, it's a it's a really identifiably pineapple note to begin with over pale malts, and then this just really nice pine tree kind of West Coast, reminiscent of a West Coast, a light West Coast IPA finish. And I like that. That's good stuff. It's that good. 
and then to finish. So Nordic Kvikeists are old, traditional, family handed down from generation to generation yeasts common to Northern Europe. They are commonly stored and given, uh, yes, preserved, in cakes. And a, uh, well really, traditionally, a, a mother would hand down the family cake to the daughter, you know, when the daughter marries. Um, and this was their farmhouse or their, their, their common beer, their common ale. So uh, about a year ago, I'm guessing, I think it was just a year ago, there was Kvike yeast that found its way to Olympia. I don't know if it was the first time. I doubt it was the first time, but it was the first time I was aware of it in the local microbrewery scene. Um, Top Rung Brewing had, um, had, had one that was really good that I enjoyed a lot. Um, there was one the year before, um, my cousin Vinny, Nordic Ale by someone, I can't remember. I really enjoyed that. That was like the first time I had a Kvike yeast. It's like, wow, this is something special. I find that Kvike yeasts bring their own bitterness to beers. It's not like the the the, the beer's bitter bitter qualities are not simply those that can be attributed to the hops, and I find them very interesting and very tasty for that reason. So this is a hazy pale ale. This is Ho River Brewing. I don't believe it's the first Ho River beer I've had. I'm pretty sure it's the first Ho River be beer that I have reviewed. But it is definitely the first time I've been to Ho River Brewing. I stopped by there this morning, and their very friendly um, uh, tapsman there gave me a sample of a couple other beers that uh, are really quite interesting. And um, who knows, I might get a chance to review them in the future. One of them was a ghost pepper Mexican lager that was... Oh, I like spicy things. Like, I have ghost pepper salsas that are legitimately hot. And, um this was pretty decent. It wasn't really hot, but it's hotter than the average person would like. And it had this really nice lime character. And then there was their porter, which he said was his favorite. I always ask Tapsman, what's your favorite beer? And then I ask him why. It's just a fun way to learn their tastes and then what it is they appreciate about the beers they're serving. So I like that. I like doing that. And his favorite was their porter. And their porter had this really, really interesting character. It was a coffee porter rather than a chocolate porter. It was definitely to the drier side of things. And it had um, almost a vodka bite to it. Like Mr. Black um, cold brew coffee liqueur kind of thing. Really cool. Really interesting. Totally off topic. Well, tangentially off to topic. This is Ho River Beers Thor's Vog Nordic Kvike Hazy IPA. I'm expecting hazy IPAs typically being sweeter, more tropical, more smooth and, and such than West Coast. I'm expecting the, um, the bitterness to play a very interesting role, the bitterness of the yeast to play a very interesting role in this. I am kind of also going off memory because I drank this earlier when it was a bit colder and I totally did just drink instead of sniff. Um, but I remember noticing that this had an almost um, tomato character to it, to the nose. Not like actual tomato or stewed tomato or canned tomato or anything like that, but it's just the nose had an interesting salty and acidity note to it that, that made me think of tomato. Which, I'm, which I seem to recall is something that I noted in last year's Kvikes. Anyways, uh, the, the initial taste has that same kind of a tomato start, which is really interesting. It's dry, but, but still fruity. So it's not sweet, but there's a fruit character. And there's kind of a salty and, and a, an acidic note to it. After that, you quickly get um, a juicy citrus, not 
not a full-on orange and not a full-on grapefruit, but maybe halfway in between a ruby grapefruit and a um, and a navel orange. So, kind of that funky tart citrus, but then turned a bit sweeter, or kind of that really sweet luscious citrus turned just a little bit to the funky tart side. It's it's really delicious. It's very juicy, which is a good thing with a hazy. The finish is pretty simple on this. Like once you get through kind of that vegetable, fruit, uh, salty, acidic start and into the juiciness, then it just kind of fades. And you're left with a, a mildly earthy, um, maybe cracker, a little bit of cracker in there finish. And, and then it's just kind of gone. And I remember commenting when I was first drinking this, when it was freshest, I remember noting I, I really wanted an extra bite of that same kind of West Coast IPA finish that the uh, Little Beast Brewing's Greenkeeper Pale Ale had, that kind of West Coast brushy, bushy, green, verdant finish, because it seemed to me like that would really kind of sweep the mouth and cleanse the palate and then make me look forward to the next drink of this more. This is not unpleasant. Thor's Vog Nordic Vike is not unpleasant. I just think that maybe going hazy made it less of the beer that I'd like, personally. It's still a really good beer. It's very interesting. Um, the combination of the more like grapefruit and really, really, really subtle tropical notes with that that slight kind of tomato-y uh, vegetable and slightly uh, bitter uh, kvaik yeast body is really interesting and quite quite tasty. It, it's good. It's a good beer. Um, it's it's this good. And on that note, this has been me, Matthew. I've been chewing the brew, checking out three different beers, three different beers that I purchased today fresh from a tap room. They were, first off, Level Beers, Fresh Hop Lager 23, which is a fresh hop lager. Little Beast Brewings, Green Keeper Pale Ale, which is a pale ale, also fresh hop, both from Oli Tap Room. And Ho River Brewing's own Thor's Vog Nordic Vike Hazy IPA. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. I don't have anything else to drink. I shall mime it. There, is that ridiculous enough?